Good evening, my wonderful people. Welcome to my channel. We come to the third nakshatra, Kritika, ruled by Agni. Always look for the rulers of nakshatra when you are studying the characteristics or want to look at it from a professional point of view because we are talking about D10, the career. Career as in not job you'll finally land up, but what kind of qualities you carry, what kind of talents you carry. Let's face it, in this day of artificial intelligence and everybody losing their jobs and so much fear going around and everything, what is more important to you? You need to know what qualities you have, what other things you can do from your mainstream maybe. Maybe you're an accountant, maybe you're an engineer or in the IT industry, I don't know, wherever you are working. And let's say you lose your job, you need to find out what other things you can do. Maybe you're good for an entrepreneur, maybe you're good for some other line of work. This is where I'm coming from at least and this is what I want to explore and help you understand let's say by the way of case studies, by the way of all covering all these 27 nakshatras through all the 12 ascendants, basic rules and so on and so forth. Talents, knowing talents and abilities is more important than where you finally land up. Because if your talent is not in alignment with your career path or whatever it is that you ended up doing as a profession, and these is lots of kids are, you know, confused. There are so many choices, especially in India. There's so many choices of careers and they do one thing half, leave it half and then go to another thing. They're so confused. It says, it's just not their fault. It's just a question of confusion of too many choices. That's the way I see it. Too many choices, it's like a huge buffet of careers that laid out in front of you. Nobody tells you these kinds of things as in, what is your real talent here? What can you shine in? right and these things which i'm bringing hopefully will make you know a source of study first you need to study these things and then hopefully come up with better career options or what other things you can do in life also which you may not have considered so as usual first we'll go through the introduction after we finish the introduction the basic rules then we'll get to the 12 ascendants and we'll go quickly yeah Okay, so let's get right into the introduction and then later the, the 12 ascendants, okay? So these are the ground rules for every nakshatra. Yes, I'm putting this as the ground rules, the second slide. Number one to number 12 houses you can see in the T10 in this, starting from Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha, all the same rest of the rules, yes? But here I have put in as in the first nursery nakshatra, number one house stands for what this is the most dominant part of what your personality is which you bring to all of the houses in your career so whatever nakshatra your ascendant is falling in in the d10 chart and all the characteristics of that nakshatra will carry into whatever profession you are characteristics not necessarily the professions i want to be very clear on this the characteristics or the qualities of the nakshatra will come into all the areas of your profession and you will notice this if you pull out your detailed chart this is a mandatory thing this is the necessary condition okay now <clears throat> when you come to the second house your artha house the second house your values at work and how you talk to your colleagues your wealth earned themes will play out as per the sign of the zodiac even if there is no planet in it with any nakshatra in it if you want to go deep dive then you see the lord of the second house where it is placed and which nakshatra it is placed and you can see the other nakshatra video which i will post later let's say if it is in kritika or if it is in uh, whatever Ashlesha, you can see that nakshatra lord of that thing placed and then you can surmise the meanings from that you have to derive meanings folks this is not a ready-made cooked up dish i'm giving you i'm giving you a formula how to find these things out yes the third house the kama house in a d10 chart house not the sign the house will give how your colleagues and peers are what is your competitive spirit at work and what are your skill sets again third house sign will play out definitely as a theme the lord of the third house wherever it is sitting in and the nakshatra that is sitting in will play out for that house for your detail but your dominant personality will still be the ascendant nakshatra if you do not understand these things keep 
playing this over and over again you will get it it's like a matter of practice yeah the fourth house the moksha house in a d10 is a chart is for your career satisfaction because fourth fourth house in a normal chart is for your emotional satisfaction as a person in d10 it becomes about career what career satisfaction are you getting are you going to do a home based business do you have attachment to your work emotionally it's an emotional moksha house okay all houses of moksha are emotional in nature in the fifth house it shows your creativity at work it shows the quality and your interaction with your subordinates it shows change of jobs it shows also the type of work or what talents you bring to the work is more like it in the sixth house because it's a house of enemies in the natal chart in d10 it becomes about competition at work it becomes about enemies and opposition at work it stands for obstacles in your daily routine sixth house is for daily routines but now we are talking about daily routines at workplace seventh house because it's a house of spouse you know here it doesn't stand for spouse we are talking about the workplace it's although it's a karma house it stands for business partnership it can also mean spouse your spouse with respect to your career is she supportive not supportive that kind that kind of issue again examine the lords of the seventh house where it is placed what is a nakshatra and you go on from there in the eighth house which is the second moksha house it stands for ups and downs transformation any kind of transformation of career you change your jobs or there are ups and downs in your career promotion demotion all those kinds of things sudden events and it also stands for joint assets if your seventh house indicates that there's going to be a business partnership for you ninth house shows because it is gurus your teachers your mentors in the natal in d10 it becomes about mentors at work your luck factor your good luck factor and working abroad travels abroad foreign travels the 10th house will stand for authority your boss right the big pain in the back side authority your boss your position your position how much you gain posi- position in your career people want position right you want to be promoted to a senior level of course or you want to gain a higher authority in business of course that's what we all ask for appreciation will you be appreciated for your life for your career so that is shown by the 10th house so this is the main house which you should be looking at and the lord of your 10th house in the d1 and how it is placed in the d10 is one of the dominant factors lord of the 10th house in your d1 chart natal chart how what it acts up as in the d10 fulfillment of career is the 11th house because 11th house is a house of gains financial success community and social network because it's a social network house now we are talking with respect to career are you going to have a long lots of social network or less are you going to be working from home working with few people the 12th house being a moksha house the natal it becomes about retirement it becomes about settling abroad going into foreign lands working from behind the scenes it also stands for secret enemies by the way 12th house is everything hidden secret enemies the 6th house becomes house of visible enemies 12th house becomes hidden enemies loss of job especially in transits there's some specific about that whenever ketu or some other one is transiting the 12th house it might be a loss of job temporarily okay now i got to go bell is ringing so i'll get back to you shortly so the 10 deities are for each of the amsha of the d10 chart amsha is a part of the d10 chart right we saw that the zodiac each zodiac sign is 30 degrees we divide into 10 parts we get 10 amshas or 10 steps 10 parts now without going into too much mythology the each one of these names that you see over there for all those who are listening from out of india and don't know how to and make anything of anything of this stuff okay just make it simple that each one of these represents an archetype of behavior archetype of qualities that is inherently present in you which you can bring to your profession to your career to your job to your business okay and it is all about angles it is all about angles like you can see there in the chart right the first deity is indra who stands for leadership qualities power authority wants to be a ceo leader executive politician etc okay 
that is 0 to 3 degrees now all of these you are seeing degrees in angles these are the angles which a planet makes in your d10 chart this is specific to only d10 chart don't confuse this with the d1 chart or your natal birth chart okay number one when we talk of angles this is where the precision of the time of your birth becomes crucial because the ascendant is the most fickle point on your birth chart ascendant changes every hour right so it is crucial to get the angle or angle right which means to say which you need to have an accurate time of birth for your natal chart if your natal chart is accurate your Newton chart becomes automatically accurate because it's a divisional chart of your natal chart see what i'm saying so first duty you got to put or we'll just use archetype for simplicity okay first archetype is indra indra means what 0 to 3 degrees any planet or point in your d10 chart will have more leadership qualities we want to seek power seek authority he wants to be the ceo leader executive kind it's a driving energy so it's an indra kind of archetype second is three to six degrees now we are divided into 10 parts so zero to three three to six six to nine etc is go all the way from 27 to 30 degrees which completes the zodiac sign second one is agni agni is the fire or the willpower agni archetype shows what any planet or point between three to six degrees in your d10 chart will show a strong work ethic ability to overcome challenges determination inspirational passionate creative these people predominantly would land up in professions like the military, police, scientists or astronomers. Just keep that in mind for now. It doesn't mean you necessarily end up in a, becoming a cop. Okay, we'll see that later. <clears> Three, <throat> six to nine degrees is Yama. Yama is all about Dharma. It means it's all about discipline. Discipline, strong sense of responsibility, adherence to ethics and morality at work. So these kind of people, if there's a strong six to nine degrees planet, they, these people end up becoming lawyers, policy makers, HR, human resources, judge, quality managers and inspectors. These kind of professions are all about discipline, right? Strong sense of responsibility and adherence to ethics. Fourth one, 9 to 12 degrees of any planet or point in your D10 chart is the Asura, which gives it a competitive spirit, drive to succeed, ambitious. And these people typically end up becoming surgeons, healers, change makers to the traditional way at work. Everything is at your workplace. This is not your personality as a person. This is a personality at work. What you bring to the work? 12 to 15 degrees is Varuna the archetype of Varuna, excellent communication skills, adaptability, able to connect with others at work. Varuna is emotional, so it's a water deity, so to speak. So it is very strong in connecting with the emotional content of others. They can become good influencers, like social media influencer, for example. They can make good diplomats, philosophers. They can work in the tourism industry, all people oriented. Look at that. Or they can also go into the industry of petroleum, water, waste water management. Varuna is about water. Okay. Sixth angle, 15 to 18 degrees is the archetype of Vayu. What does Vayu provide this person? If more planets or points are between 15 to 18 degrees in your D10 chart, you have more Vayu qualities in you. Qualities, not the Tattva. It's the quality. Dynamic, flexible, quickest to adapt, intellectual, very intellectual people air sign why you is air air is all about mental aptitude okay so these people typically make phds doctorates scholars teachers professors personal or business coaches right the seventh one 18 to 21 degrees centigrade degree centigrade okay 18 to 21 degrees angle is kubera wealth financially astute ability to earn and save money so these people end up becoming accountants, banking and investment industry. 21 to 24 degrees. Any planet or point more dominant in 21 to 24 is Ishana. The ability to find purpose and meaning. So these people end up becoming life coaches, spiritual teachers, motivational speakers, counselors because they are looking for greater meaning. It's like a zoom out view of life itself. They have it naturally in them. Ninth one, 24 to 27 degrees. If 
more planets or points are dominant in this angle, it's called the Brahma. The Brahma archetype provides a person what? Intellectual capability, innovative thinking and originality. These people can make good scientists, good creators. They are highly creative, innovators of all kinds, any field. That's what I mean to say. The last one, 27 to 30 degrees is called Ananta. This is the Ananta Sheshnak where Vishnu resides on. He sleeps on the Ananta Sheshnak. So it is a stability, long lasting success. Thoughtful revolutionaries, change makers, successful popular writers, coaches and inspirers. You see all these motivational coaches, they might be having more of this Jupiter in this particular angle in their written chart. Okay, so I want you to keep this table in mind and I shall stick this in each one of the nakshatras as we go through the 27 of them. Okay. Now these are the general guidelines for the D10. Checking the nakshatra. I am more leaning towards the nakshatra aspect than just seeing the lords of the signs and where they are placed. Of course, that is the first line of attack. But we are going towards the nakshatra because we want to understand the qualities of talents that you carry. A career for me personally, where I come from, is totally unimportant what you do in the work if you are not enjoying the God-gifted talents that you have. Each one of us each one of us has one thing or the other in one area or the other. Judging by the way the planet is going and everything is going, the young people need to understand talents first and how what you bring to the table rather than going according to what all you get as a ready-made job. Okay. So the number one rule in that is the ascendant nakshatra. That energy will carry to any profession, career, job that you will be eventually doing, being, creating or generating in the world number one number two the planet points which carry the propensity towards a particular talent ability and disposition or inherent nature when taking the color of nakshatra and the house it sits in will play out within the professional career remember this as the rule as the person's approach and attitude towards it Number three, since in any D10 chart you will see a scattering of planets and points in different nakshatras, different houses, this is normal. It is wise to check the ascendant nakshatra first, cusp of the ascendant of D10 chart next, that is closest to it and if it is impact in the 10th house directly, 10th house is the house of your career and we are in D10 chart, 10th house rules. Saturn rules by the way. Check where your Saturn also is. Saturn in, and Sun are the Karakas of the 10th house. Sun for fame, success, Saturn for the work you do. So if it is impacting 10th house directly or by aspect indirectly. Later you can check the Lord of the 10th, it's Nakshatra and the different other planets and so on and so forth. Okay. Please keep this as the ground rules and I will include this in every single video from now on. So here we go. Like I said, I am considering Kritika Nakshatra only from Taurus, okay? I am not considering from Aries in the last Pada and so on and so forth. Because we are considering only the generic rules of the game here, okay? So let's start with the Aries Ascendant first. Aries Ascendant, it falls in the second house, the Kritika Nakshatra. Like I said, I am considering only Taurus. If you want to do Aries, do it like a homework, okay? It will be a good exercise for you. The Kritika part in Aries, I mean. So, Kritika, what are the generic talents and abilities? Especially true if it comes in the ascendant that is in the Taurus, which, is, which we shall see next. Talents and abilities. What is the qualities of Kritika? Leadership and administration, entrepreneurship and business, defense and security, ruled by Agni, and uh, mythology goes of the second lord, or uh, second son of Lord Shiva or Kartikeya, that's why Kritika, the Pleiades. Engineering and technical fields, they make good engineers also. Journalism and media, because they are very aggressive, sharp, discernment kind of energy about them. Emergency services and crisis management, why? Because they are quick responders. You need quick responders for a 911 call, for example, right? So that's what Kritika stands for. But in the second house, Kritika falls in the second house in Taurus, this is the house of work, so this will be dominant in this area, right? This is the house of work, second house is the house of work, sixth house is the house of daily routines and tenth house. These three houses you got to watch for when I talk in terms of career for a D10. 
सेकेंड हाउस वर्क सिक्स हाउस डेली रूटीन टेंथ हाउस करियर फेम रिकोगशन सो वी आर लुकिंग एट लीडरशिप एंड एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन when you say leadership and administration in general principle you got to look at these three planets for kritika nakshatra and taurus why it is ruled by venus taurus is ruled by venus lord of the ascendant so uh, jupiter venus and sun sun is leadership jupiter is more like an administrator come leadership more like the general of the army mars is the warrior that kind of a archetype entrepreneurship and business you got to look at these three planets Ma- mercury mars and sun entrepreneurship requires leadership so therefore sun mars and mercury because you require intelligence you require business like mind and you require a drive mars gives you the drive leadership is not so much of a drive leadership is more of a management role okay like the team leaders like the managers and so on defense and security will call for saturn we look for saturn mars and ketu actually it's rahu i have corrected this i think in the next slide as well something like that defense security will be rahu there yeah saturn and mars saturn and mars combination gives saturn gives a very strong sense of dharma what is right law enforcement people police military what is right i need to do this and they guard by the law saturn is a very dharmic planet in that context they stick to the law and mars provides that aggression that they need the passion that they need the anger that they need the no nonsense speaking is mars right engineering and technical fields if you want to look at career wise it will be mars mercury and rahu especially mercury and rahu will give combination of all consultancy information technology computer science abstract sciences right rahu knows how to deal with abstract sciences Mercury with Rahu will give you that combination in Kritika, and then journalism and media. What kind of planets do you look for with Kritika? Journalism and media would be Venus, Mercury, and Rahu combination together. Think of all the standard archetypes that Mercury, Venus, and Rahu provide. Okay, then you will get the idea basically. because venus provides that aesthetic sense journalism and media requires you to be somewhat good looking you can't be looking like me then you have mercury and rahu that also helps emergency services and crisis management when does kritika excel and make a career out of this mars venus and moon why do i say moon because medical services is typically characterized by the moon okay presence of the moon now that's second house the value system at work how you speak to colleagues and earned wealth now all of these significators you should also see where and how they are placed and like i spoke in the previous slide you should see the dt also we'll do case study so you will get this as we do case studies let me first finish the basic stuff here yeah? in taurus ascendant it comes in the ascendant so now all of these qualities in the first house in a taurus ascendant in kritika nakshatra you will carry to one or more of this combos you will carry to any profession that you are doing you may have entrepreneurship and business like qualities in let's say if you are doing in banking or let's say if you are doing in management or not necessarily defense and security but you are like a private investigator that can also happen so any area of life you will carry this qualities not necessarily that job title don't look at it that way yeah in gemini it comes in the 12th house kritika and taurus which is the house of retirement working abroad foreign travels when you think of foreign travels again you got to look at the lord of the ascendant also which in this case is mercury so if you are in engineering and technical fields mercury if it's placed in 12th house lord of the ascendant is in 12th house in d10 chances are you might go abroad and work as a software engineer as many indians do by the way right silicon valley that can happen hidden enemies when you talk of hidden enemies it may also be pertaining to saturn okay so saturn houses wherever let's say lord of the 10th lord of the 10th in case of gemini ascendant is jupiter so we are talking leadership and administration this can also be dominant depending upon where jupiter is placed if jupiter is placed in 6th for example i'm just taking a random pot shot if jupiter place in 6th looking at the 12th 
this person might be a consultant working abroad. That can happen. Cancer. In Cancer, it's in the 11th house, Kritika Nakshatra, which is the house for what? Fulfillment at career, financial success and community and social gains. Where is the Lord of the 11th house? You should see where Venus is placed if you're thinking money. Wherever Venus is placed, it will make the money. It may not be necessarily in this thing. Suppose Lord of the 11th is placed in 12th. It can mean more losses or it can mean earning abroad but not in native lands also. Yeah, that can happen. Community and social network. Let's say if it's placed in the Venus is placed in Kritika in the 12th house. These people can become good social networkers or even presence in media. Media, where did we talk of media? We talked of media, journalism and media. See Venus, Mercury and Rahu. If they are placed in Kritika here, this person can become a good news anchor, a talk show host, a podcast host, and that kind of a thing. In a Leo ascendant, Kritika appears in the 10th house. It is the house of career and the driver for this once again is Venus. You got to see where Venus is placed. 10th house in terms of career stands for type of relationships with boss, authority, position, career, etc. Now, if Venus is placed here, this person will very do, do very well in terms of wherever Venus is appearing here, which is where, which is journalism and media and emergency response and crisis management. You might do very well in those kind of careers, right? In Virgo, it falls in the ninth house. In ninth house, what is it? In terms of work, it is about mentors and gurus working abroad, temporary travels and good luck, good fortune. Yeah, I'm sweating here because there's no fan. If I put fan, it will make a lot of noise, but never mind. Right? So mentors at work. Mentors, leadership and administration. So you look at Jupiter, Venus and Sun. Lord of the ninth house. Look at where Jupiter is sitting. Look at where Venus is sitting and Sun is sitting. And what kind of deity is ruling them. If it is the Indra, the first zero to, to three degrees, it means a lot of leadership qualities, right? They want to be like the Indra, the king of the Devas in Libra. In Libra, it falls in the eighth house, eighth house of changes, transformations, change of jobs. What kind of thing will be applicable here? Ups and downs in careers, joint assets. Who looks for assets in entrepreneurship and business? So you've got to look at Mercury, Mars and Sun if you're looking at joint assets in this particular house. Yeah, if there is there in Kritika, they might be interested in a lot of joint assets. Scorpio ascendant, it falls right opposite in the seventh. So you've got to look at spouse. You look got to look at business partnership, business partnership. Again, will come in the department of the second one, Mercury, Mars and Sun. If they are placed here, especially Mercury, if it's placed here, they make very good business partners and Libra, Scorpio. Well, they're not very good with opposite side of the things. They are more fixated, but Rahu will give them that boost. If Rahu is placed with Mercury in the seventh for a Scorpio ascendant, they make excellent business partners. Yeah trust for the business partners. Sagittarius. For a Sagittarius ascendant, the Kritika falls in competition. Now Kritika is very good in competition, right? So you might look at Mars, wherever Mars is placed. Mars is for entrepreneurship and business and defense and security. If Mars and Saturn are placed here. Saturn is aspecting or Mars is aspecting this house and placed here. This will be good for them for defense and security because sixth house is the house of enemies. Yeah. And they will take down the enemies like nobody's business in Kritika, Mars and Saturn in the sixth house. In the fifth house, which is for a Capricorn ascendant, creativity at work, subordinates at work, change of jobs and talents being used of work is what the fifth house stands for. Hmm. So how will this affect them? Which one are we talking about? Creativity. Which ones are of these professions are creative? Journalism and media. Basically. So you're looking at Venus, Mercury and Rahu. Venus is the ruler of this house. If it's present here, it will be very exalted in its own house. Mercury. 
if mercury is present in the 6th house or mercury is present in the 9th more like 9th because 9th is more of learning and creativity rahu wherever rahu is placed and it is positive of that you got to look at that yeah aquarius for an aquarius ascendant it falls in the 4th house so it's a what career satisfaction now home based business emotional attachment to satisfaction from work this is a qualitative thing so it can be placed anywhere but you should look for moon moon in the 4th house is a good satisfaction indicator last pisces third house stands for peer colleagues competition drive and your skill sets this is important for any work yes any work requires certain amount of skill sets and certain sense of competitive spirit so we we need to look at third house in developing skills so entrepreneurship and business i would say more in terms of coaching in terms of business coach and that kind of a thing mercury mars and sun they might become very good business coaches i know one such lady business coach she does very well and her third house is strong we'll see more of this in the case studies yeah so that's it for me for now next one we shall be taking who's the guy after it mrikshira mrikshirsha right oh no sorry rohini we'll take rohini and then we'll go to mrikshirsha in while take care be safe and be happy wherever you are